Today, I want to do selective web scraping. That could be here in this search result that I want news one, news four and five. We will use the browser extension Pixie Bricks, and then we'll send it to a UiPath Orchestrator queue. First, we'll go to the UiPath Orchestrator. Here I am in my folder PB demo, and I'll just be creating a new queue. Here I'll be calling this some news data, and then I'll click add. Now I'll go back here. And to open up Pixie Bricks, I need to press F12. That will open up the developer tools. Here you can see a Pixie Bricks tab. If you don't see it, you need to install Pixie Bricks. So go click the video up in the right corner. That will take you to the step by step guide. And then you can come back to this video. In case you see it, just go click it. Click this logo over here. Go over to integrations. Click add integration. Here you'll find UiPath Cloud Orchestrator. Click configure. We can call this UiPath PB demo. The user key, go back to UiPath Orchestrator. In fact, you need to go down to admin. Choose your tenant. Click services. In Orchestrator, click these three dots. API access. The user key is right up here. Then we need client ID. It's down here. The tenant name that is here. The account name is also here. That is the organization ID. Then we need a folder ID. If you're like me is inside a folder. For that, let me close this here. We go to orchestrator again. Make sure you are in your folder. Mine was called PB demo. It's here. Up in the URL, you will find that. So go copy the number here. Only the number, not the FID equals to. Go back here, and paste it in. Click save. We have now made uh, the Pixie Bricks UiPath integration. We can go back here. We want to make a context menu. And whenever we click an element, we want that news to be web scraped and then moved into a UiPath Orchestrator queue. Add context menu. And here in the title, we will say send news to Orchestrator. Now, if I click save here, you can see that if I right click up here, I now have a send news to Orchestrator in my context menu. Very cool. But to be able to add something to a UiPath queue, Click this add brick, search for a UI path, uh, add UI path queue item and click add over here. I need a queue name and I called mine some news data. Remember, I have it right here. So this is my queue name. Then I need to add something to the queue. So this will just be a blank one. So I'll add a property. And here I can just have a, a key value pair. So this one could be like the property could be named test A and we'll give it the value, value A. So a hard coded one. After that, we will be scraping the data and adding that to the queue. So if I click save here and then I just click here, send news to orchestrator, I'll be going to my queue. Go inside it, view transaction. We now have a queue item. So I click view details. And here you can see that I just have a test A value A. So hard coded one. We want to be able to web scrape data to the queue. So we go back here. We'll need to add a few more steps. Again, very simple. First, you will go up here, click this little plus, find an HTML element reader and click add here. What this does is that I can now hover my mouse over an element, for example, the second one and right click, and then I can run the flow send news to orchestrator. Of course, this will create a new queue item here. So if I refresh it here, that's fine. I can empty the queue later on with these items that I don't really need. But it created some elements over here. And if I click this arrow here, you can see that I have a text now. It says that this is the title. This is actually this title. If I move into the A A T T R S, I also have an href, which is the URL. 
So now I scrape the, these two things, I can add it to my queue. Let's pick the title first. That will be this text. And here you can see that this brick produces a variable called element. And then I'll just add this text to it. It looks like this. And I copy it so Pixie Bricks will do it automatically. So I'll just say title here. Then I go over here to the value. Since this is a variable, let me just click it here. Variable. Control V, paste it in. Here you can see the element.text. Similarly, I'll be getting the UL. Go over here. Make sure that you have a variable here. Go up to the HTML element reader. Grab out the UL. Go down here. Control V, paste it in. So now I have my title and my UL. Let's try to run it. Now I will be, for example, I will be getting this. So I right click, send news to orchestrator. Then if I go here and actually try to refresh the queue, you can see that I have a new queue item. So I view details. There you go. I can now do selective web scraping. Here I have the title and the URL. Actually, the description is also easy to get, but a little bit more tricky. If I go back here. Here, I want to first create the selector for the description, and I want to tie it to the URL that the user actually have chosen. Let me show you. So after the HTML element reader, click and find a JQ JSON processor add. Here I will be designing my selector. And if I go down to data, this is where I want to do it. But first, I need to find the actual selector and I can just click elements here, click inspect and then take one of the description. It doesn't really matter. Here I can see that we're inside a P element. If I expand this, this is where my title is. So I know that I am inside a P element. I also know that up here in the data URL, here's the URL. This is the URL that we just grabbed. So if I can somewhat use this as a dynamic element in the selector, that is the UL element, the URL that we just grabbed, then we can navigate to this description. So we need something to tie them to each other. Finally, I can see that I am in the ID equals body. So I'll also use that. Move back to Pixie Bricks. So in the data, now I'm creating my selector. Here I want to say ID equals to body, I can just do this. Then I also want to say in hard brackets, I want the data URL equal the news. First, it's hard coded, we will change that. So make sure you double click up here, copying, copy it over to picture bricks in these hard brackets like this. Change the double quotation marks to single quotation marks like this. And over here, we also have the P that was the P element that we want to look in for the actual description. But since we don't want this hard coded one, we want to get the URL that we found up here, this one can change. So we make a dynamic selector down here. So simply just copy it again up here if you don't already have it in your clipboard, which you might not have. Then you mark this, delete it. Then you can just press control V that will paste in the actual variable and to treat this as a variable, add two curly brackets in the end and in the start like this. So now we have designed our selector. It looks like this. Then we're adding a brick which will read whatever this selector is pointing at. That will be a description here. And then we can use that in the UiPath Q item. And here you can see that we have a transform two and a transform. This might be a little bit bad, 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 bad practice, sorry, that uh, these ones are so easily to distinguish, uh, hard to distinguish. So if I just go up here, I can say transformed selector like this or dynamic selector. Then I go down here, add brick. I will find a jQuery selector reader. Drag this one in. So here I have a property and the value that will just be this transformed selector. So I can go use that. And here I'll again choose a variable. I will be let me just be passing it in. And here I will need an F in front of it. Now I can try to save this, I can try to run the flow again. So just send the news to orchestrator. And one thing that you'll notice that uh, in this jQuery selector reader, if you go to the output, you can see that we have no output data. 
That is because we need to change this root mode from inherit to document. That is just where we want to look at. So now we'll, we're starting from the entire document and then we'll start looking for this selector. Now, if I scrape this and let me just, let us take this one here, send the news to orchestrator. Now you can see in the output for this jQuery selector reader, we actually have some data. If I expand this, you can see the data property. We now have it. Let's go add that in the actual add UiPath Q item. So I'll add the UiPath Q item. That'll be called description. This will also be a variable like this. I'll press Control V. So now I can pick any news and this will move directly into my UiPath Q. Let's take this one. So right click, send news to orchestrator. We might have a few here and again, you can just empty the queue and whenever you have built your flow. But if I pick the last one, view details, now we have it. We have the title, the URL, and the description. Let me show you something just as cool. So let me just close this, move back to picture bricks. We can also send this to Teams, and this is so cool. So I'll just click Add Brick. Then I just find a Send Card to Microsoft Teams, click Add. You also need to make the integration between Picture Bricks and Teams, it's straightforward. I'll even have a video up here in the right corner that shows you how to do that. So the text, that will be the text that goes into it. And here I will just move up to my HTML element reader and choose this title. So I copy it from up here. I go back here. So add the text. And again, since this is a variable, I will be uh, I will need to change this to a variable and then just paste it in like this. Similarly, I want a title and a title that will just be the actual description and the URL. So the description, well, we just found it here. We had it in the UiPath Q item. That was this one here, or we can grab it from the actual brick itself. So um, let me just go up here. And since this is it, we will create a string. So I'll keep the string here. And to treat this as a variable, I'll have two double quotation marks and I'll do this. Then on the next line, I'll probably have something like read more about it, colon. And then since this is only, as you can see here in the orchestrator queue, you can see that we still need the prefix that is HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash sum DK. And then we have the news. So we will add this prefix up here and then we can start uh, pasting in the URL. That will look something like this, https colon two forward slashes sum dot dk. And now we can have our variable. So that one will go into two curly brackets, two curly brackets ends, and we will have it here. This one is the URL, which we had up here. Just add it, or you can find it in the add UI path Q item. So now I paste it in here. I can now save flow here and then I can run it. Let's go up and pick, uh, for example, this one here. So I right click, send news to orchestrator. We could change this title up here in the context menu because now it's also sent to Teams. So if I go to my Teams, there you go. We now have our web scrape data directly into the Teams channel. You should be professional certified in Pixie Bricks with me. It's totally free. Just click the video here in the middle of the screen.